boy M. Langston. We here today, public service announcement. Knowing your history and your community. We here, Billy Jean Jackson Park, an honorable Billy Jean Jackson Sr. Park's named after this gentleman, man, a great community activist in our community. He did a lot of things for Salisbury, man, for the African American people in Salisbury, especially here on the west side of the community. So, you know, we're going to get into the history. Knowing your history gives you pride in yourself, makes you respect yourself more. And there's a lot of African American history right here on the eastern shore, not alone the eastern shore, but our city of Salisbury. So, without no further ado, we're going to go ahead over to 349, Chronicle Road and 50, with Brother Khalil Shabazz. I'm Brother Khalil Shabazz, standing here at the corner of West Main and Nanticoke Road here in Salisbury, Maryland. We up here observing this sign. This is some kind of historic docu uh, historic marker, uh, trying to let people know exactly what was going on around here. And this is just pure evidence to our relationship to the Eastern Shore. And you can read for yourself. I'll read it out loud. The Green Hill Town and Port, authorized by Act of Assembly in 1706, one of six ports where vessels shall unlay Negro wares, merchandises, and commodities. 100 acres to be laid out in lots with open spaces left for a church, marketplace, and public buildings. Present church built in 1733, State Roads Commission. So they actually showing you the marker, a spot where you can go to to find out where we were bought and sold, like they bought and sold horses, cows, chickens, uh, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, you know what I mean? They bought and sold it. So they find a great reason to leave this mark up here. I think it's good too because if you look at this marker, this marks the historical west side of Salisbury where the black population of Salisbury has always lived. And, and uh, so it's like, it's all connected. Mm. Just so we back, you know. It's always good to know the history about where you're from, man. You know, now I bet you a lot of y'all didn't even know that. You know, signs around your community. Sometimes get out your car, stop, read some things, man. It's always good to be knowledgeable, pick up some books and read. Mr. Billy Jackson, one of the best track coaches in our community, also football coaches in our community. My uncle Clyde Mitchell used to always talk about Mr. Jackson being an honorable teacher, man. That's a big up, man. That's what it's about, the history of our people, here in our community. So, we're gonna shoot over 50. Arby's on 50, a lot of y'all don't know, by Y Middle, historical site. So we're gonna go over to Khalil Shabazz and let him tell you a little bit about that area. Khalil Shabazz is back with you again. And we out here on uh, the east side of Salisbury now. Uh, Salisbury, Maryland, we at the historic Houston Cemetery. Now we're staying in, in this, it's historic because this was the black cemetery for Salisbury. Now, this is where all our history, you know what I mean, all our people who, who help establish businesses, commerce, uh, spiritual spiritual uh, centers and education centers are all buried here. Now, the, the thing about it is that this was uh, a lot larger at one time. A lot larger. It actually reached from the following. If you can see across the older, the oldest headstone, the longest back there, and it went across the highway before they had a Route 50 the highway come through here. The cemetery went across, and, you could, and if we went on the other side. You'll still see uh, markers and tombstones over there uh, existing right now. Um, they decided to build businesses and stuff inside inside this particular neighborhood, and felt that. Our, our history and our legacy and the burial rights of our people was not enough uh, to stop them from plowing through. And uh, actually, Arby's in this parking lot, that actually existed on top of graves. Uh, and that's, that's a travesty in and of itself. You know, they're existing on top of our people's graves. Bad enough we didn't have anything inside this, this, this nation that we could call our own for real. Um, when we did have places that were sacred to us, because we don't have any power, they were able to take our stuff and put restaurants on top of our graves. 
Can you imagine going to uh, one of the graves uh, of, of the Parsons family or the Purdue family and putting up a club or a liquor store on one of their, their uh, grave sites or the Ruark family or something like that? You wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine it. But look what they do to us. Cultural Center. Uh, this is a historical marker because before it became a culture center, this was the oldest, uh, the first African American church in Delmarva. It was established by the slave masters for their slaves. They didn't really want the slaves worshiping with them, so they built the church for them. Um, after so many years, uh, uh, one of the uh, esteemed educators inside of Salisbury, Mr. Charles H. Chipman, and he was a principal at Salisbury High. Um, they bought the, the they bought the property and it transformed into a culture center as they existed there. You go inside the culture center, they, they rent it out for parties and different functions they have here. And uh, they also have a, a mini museum inside here. But it's always good to know that we're in the, what we consider the Newtown area. And we back again. So well-known history facts, man. Like I said, it's a lot of African-American culture pride here, right here in our city of Salisbury, you know, on, on, on all prevalent issues, all prevalent things, from education to, to religion to, to everything. So without no further ado, the next place that we're going to go to is it's a mansion, museum, in the uh, Newtown area, Salisbury area, you know, North Division area, things of that nature. You should go check it out sometime. It's an old sleeve home. Go in, take a tour. Check it out for yourself. So without any further ado, we're gonna go over to Brother Khalil Shabazz at that mansion. This is um well, this is what you call old Salisbury money. And the height of the slave trade and the height of them incorporating the city. And this neighborhood is where your bankers, your your big landowners, your landlords, you know what I'm saying, small business owners, uh, they got little machine shops and things of that nature. They lived in this community. As you can see. If you go around in this neighborhood, you'll see that all these houses have attics because that's where their servants, their slaves lived. They lived in the attics or in the basement, just like this one. The basement. This is where you've been your slave quarters. No different from the cell. They don't have an attic maybe on the front side, but they may have an attic on the back side. 
what we trying to show and depict is that even after all the situation that we went through as Africans inside this community, we still competing with these same people because their money still exists at the dominant uh, economic uh, motion inside Salisbury. You know, the same people who own these land, these houses years and years later are descendants of the people who owned them before. You know what I mean? And they still had the same policy to maintain uh, a certain status quo that don't have us involved. So we left scraping crumbs if that's our choice. I choose not to s scrape crumbs. I say let's bake our own cake in our own factory on our own land. We got more to show you. making some news, you know, business-wise in the community, uh, in the area we discussed before, you know, in Cambridge and things like that, some things y'all was trying to do. Want to talk a little bit about that and the moves y'all trying to make up there? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, you know, we're still working on the blueprint, but it's like, you know, it's something, you know, real serious coming to that area for, for the people, man, you know, not to really want to get too in, in yeah. detail with it, but <clears throat> it's pretty much like a... Um, you know, like a a cornerstone, you know what I mean, for her telling the rep where she came from and, you know, they building a museum and and, you know, various other, you know, um business, you know, ventures that they're putting together, you know, to empower, you know, black people from our communities, whether they want to own restaurants or any performing arts, whether they draw, you know what I mean, paint, you know what I mean, rap, you know, anything. So it's pretty much you know, some, good yeah, good opportunity for people, you know what I mean? We back. A lot of y'all probably don't even know some of the things that we're teaching y'all, man. It's very important that you pay attention and be educated, man. Public service announcement, knowing the history of your area, the history of your community, the history of the whole Eastern Shore. There's a lot of culture here, man. You need to know it to have pride in yourself. So now we're going to go to another well-known fact about Salisbury for those that were in those areas. You know, Bob Blue River, across from Blue River, was a very prominent business area for successful black people. The whole West Main area was owned by doctors and lawyers and African Americans who were a lot of pride in themselves, First and Second Street and all of those streets in that area. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to that area. Brother Khalil Shabazz is going to explain a little bit more, man, the culture that we have right here in our city. Now, we down here at the corner of West Main and Lake Street here in Salisbury, Maryland. Now, it don't look like much anymore, but not too long ago, this was the black capital, I mean, this is the uh, center of black economy inside of Salisbury, inside the whole Eastern Shore. Uh, we had several, like, great, this, this building here, uh, Franklin Hotel was upstairs, the whole, upstairs the hotel. This is a drugstore. We had Mr. Curly. Down the street here, we had several barber shops in the parking lot adjacent to this building. It's a parking lot now. There used to be other buildings going down. He had several barber shops and restaurants uh, across the street here. In this parking lot, there were several clubs. You had the Lock and Load. You had the Flamingo. You had the Gun and Ride Club. You had several clubs. You had other clubs across here too. Now this area is real significant because prior to uh, the Civil Rights Movement and our gains in the Civil Rights Movement, that bridge, the Main Street Bridge was the actual line of demarcation, meaning if you were black, you shouldn't be across that bridge <laughs> unless you worked over there. You know what I mean? And it was like that up until the 60s. And uh, so everything on this side of the bridge is basically what we ran. And, and this, this kind of, and it was a very affluent community, very, a lot of money. We had doctors, lawyers, teachers, preachers, you know what I'm saying, all kind of professions. And they lived in this neighborhood. They, they had their shops here, and they lived in the neighborhood adjacent to it. Not far from here, you know, because we couldn't go to PGH at the time, which is now PRMC, we had a black hospital. That black hospitals actually a lot that exists next to where Miss uh, Miss Sigurds, who is a former city council president, where she resides, next to her is where the uh, Yo, black out. hospital was. Hey.
So what we try and do is show you, and you know, now to look at this, one thing comes to mind for me, how the black Charles Gray lose it all. We don't have no history of our existence. These clubs were a part of the chicken circuit that ran across uh, the United States up and down the East Coast. Uh, you had stars like Cab Calloway and Fast Domino actually made residence. There's actually children of these guys that, you know, live here. Um, what happened to our history? That we don't control the land, it's going to be hard to control that history. So we got to get the land so we can stop this type of thing from happening. Nobody should be allowed to erase your history with a record. Chill, I'm gon' make it. I have no worries in knowing I'm gon' make it. The press try skimming and tell me I won't make it. Well play boy, I'm knowing I'm gon' make it. So why you wanna hate Face to face with the gargantuan with the bigger view, a picture of life. Slick as tarantula, I'm building with my stamina. Unlock a lot of mysteries and seeing a lot of cracks in the puzzle. Open wave as I redefine a slave. And I'm breathing time of day and my resting time of night. Into the closet, wood full of hatches, chrome ratchets. Silver wall brackets, fight for nothing, pandemonium and golden shacklets, dollar own maggots. Father having good for nothing, father living bastards. Redirect chickens, I'm singing in my kitchen. Define premonition, the street walkers walking for nothing and fighting for nothing and claiming that it's something. Always keep my mind the level of cosmos, away from all the most and far away from any coast. From a different region, climbing to a different season. A little out of limits, still keep it in the limit. Chill, I'm gon' make it. I have no worries in knowing I'm gon' make it. The rest try skimming and tell me I won't make it. Real playboy, I'm knowing I'm gon' make it. So why you wanna hate? Chill, I'm gon' make it. I have no worries in knowing I'm gon' make it.